You know, fasting isn't dangerous. It's what all the people on the internet tell you to do that can make it dangerous. So much conflicting stuff with no science to back it up. Just random, I tried this and it worked, which works to a degree, but we have to look at hard data to determine what the worst advice is when it comes down to intermittent fasting. So let's dive in. Without wasting a bunch of time, let's jump into this first one. The first bit of bad advice is breaking your fast with fats. I understand where that thought process comes from. Fats are satiating, they keep you full. So it would be understandable that people would say, oh, break your fast with fats so that you stay full for a longer period of time. But we have to remember that the body preserves energy during a fast within given areas of the body. Now, the cool thing is your body actually increases its resting metabolic rate for the most part. So certain processes are upregulated, like fatty acid utilization, fat burning, lipolysis. That's all increased during a fast, which is great. You burn more calories. But certain processes are downregulated. For example, well, digestive enzymes. And that's the big one we want to focus on. So there's a study that was published in the journal Comparative Biochemistry and Physiology. And this was interesting. It was an animal study. It wasn't human, but it was still fascinating. They found that when subjects went on a two-day fast, they had a 20 to 50% reduction in their digestive enzymes, as well as a huge reduction in their bile acids or bile salts. So what happens there? Well, it takes days for bile to replenish. Okay, but what I'm suggesting here is that fats, in terms of digestion, take a lot to break down. Okay. And there's a wide variety. For example, saturated fats, because those bonds are saturated, it requires a lot more pancreatic lipase to break them down, which means food is going to sit in your stomach for an extended period of time, not only causing digestive discomfort, but also slowing down nutrient absorption. And at the end of a fast, you want things to absorb as fast as you possibly can. You don't want things sitting there. Okay, also, we don't want just to be completely satiated to the point where we don't consume enough calories during our actual eating window. We don't want to just be starving ourselves. So what should you eat? Well, if you must have fats, I would recommend a faster digesting fat, maybe an MCT oil if you can handle it. That's gonna cause some GI discomfort as well. Maybe some monounsaturated fats, but in reality, have protein. Protein requires digestive enzymes too, but nothing near what fats require. Moving on to the next one. People will tell you, have exogenous ketones during a fast because it'll increase fat burning. No, that is a perfect example of what is called reverse causality. We think, when we look at it, that ketones equal fat burning. But the reality is that fat burning equals ketones. So adding ketones into the mix does not increase fat burning. In fact, adding ketones into the mix slows down fat burning. It's actually pretty simple. When we're breaking down a lot of fats for fuel, fats go to the liver and we ultimately end up with what's called acetyl coenzyme A. But when insulin levels are low and our insulin glucagon ratio is low, all that acetyl coenzyme A, well, we don't use it all, okay? So some of it ends up getting converted by specific enzymes into ketones when we are in the process of burning a lot of fat. Now, let me reference an interesting study that'll put this into perspective. The Journal of Biological Chemistry published a study that showed that when beta-hydroxybutyrate ketones were taken in, it actually inhibited lipolysis. It stopped lipolysis, meaning it was activating a receptor on what is called the adipocyte, your stored fat. It was activating a receptor that blocked that fat from getting released. Well, then why do we want ketosis? Why would we want, I mean, if ketones stop fat loss, then why would we ever want them? Well, we want them naturally. We don't necessarily want them exogenously, especially during a fast, because it creates what is called a negative feedback loop. Okay, a feedback loop is designed to protect your body. So think about it like this. If we were to have astronomically high levels of ketones, don't worry, you're not gonna go there unless you have type one diabetes, but if you were to have astronomically high levels of ketones, you would go into what's called diabetic ketoacidosis. So when the body starts to see ketone levels elevating, it says, uh-oh, pump the brakes, stop releasing fat, because fat is the prior step to ketones. So the body says, ketones are high, stop releasing fat, that way we don't accidentally produce too many ketones and hurt this person. It's a natural process that is there to protect us. We do not want our ketone levels getting too high, and therefore we do not want to add extra ketones. It is not going to help you burn fat. It may keep you satiated, but in my opinion, it is hurting your fast, so disregard them. The next piece of advice that people will give, okay, intermittent fasting is still a caloric deficit, so you should still try to reduce your calories during your eating window. No, <laughs> please don't. Okay, at best, you should eat what is called ad libitum. You should eat how you feel, almost like intuitive eating. Like, eat until you're full, but don't overeat, okay? 
you don't want to starve yourself during a period that you've already been, well, quote unquote, starving during your fast. Okay? Fasting, during the actual fasting period, you are accelerating your metabolism. People think that, okay, I'm not eating, I must be slowing down my metabolism. No, because your body is in somewhat of a state of shock during your fast, you're actually increasing your resting metabolic rate. You're increasing the amount of fat you're burning. You're increasing all those things. And that is the benefit that you're getting from fasting. Do not try to extend that benefit by further restricting calories after you break your fast, because then your body is going to be dancing that fine line between just a low calorie diet and intermittent fasting. We want it very clear and defined. This is when I'm fasting, this is when I'm not. So during the periods in which you are not fasting, you should try to eat normally. Don't try to load up the calories, but eat normally. Otherwise, you will slow down your metabolism. I don't mean you need to go and indulge and enjoy yourself too much. You should still eat clean, but don't try to restrict more. Okay, it's not about how many calories you eat with intermittent fasting. The extra calorie burning is really occurring during your fasting period. So don't try to extend it. If you need ideas for different things to eat during your eating window and getting your calories in in a healthier way, I put a link down below for something called Thrive Market, which is what I use. Online membership-based grocery store. So they got keto options, fasting options, all kinds of really cool stuff. So there's a link down below. They're a big supporter and sponsor on this channel, so I'm indebted to them. They've made all this content possible, but it's super convenient because everything gets delivered to your doorstep. It's super easy. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It's very economical and a lot more affordable than most grocery stores in many ways, but also you can save 25% off of a Thrive Market membership if you use that link down below and also get a free gift. So big thank you to Thrive and please make sure you do check them out. It will make your fasting lifestyle easier. I can assure you that. It's, at least it has for me. Okay, this next one is really interesting. People will say on the internet, do not work out extra hard during your fast. I understand where this comes from once again. I try to play devil's advocate and look at both sides. People will say, okay, yeah, fasting is a stressful event. You should not add more stress to it. I agree with that to some degree, okay? But additionally, they will say, it deepens the caloric deficit too much. You're already in a caloric deficit when you're fasting, so don't deepen it by working out. Okay, I understand that calories in, calories out matter. That is a mathematical law and I, I get it, but there is a lot more to the equation than that, okay? So when you are working out, you are stimulating what is called mTOR, and you can stimulate it in localized areas. There is a study that was published in the journal Scientific Reports that found that you could activate mTOR within a muscle group independently of amino acid consumption. So, okay, if you look at the big picture with the fasting world, there's autophagy, which happens when you're fasting, and there's mTOR, which ultimately happens when you're not fasting. And that was a very black and white discussion up until recently. We realized that, oh, we can activate mTOR within a muscle to preserve that muscle. So believe it or not, by weight training or working out during your fast, you preserve muscle because then your body recognizes that muscle that's being used as critical and important for the fast or for life. So it does not burn it. If you were to stand there or sit on the couch fasting doing nothing, your body would eat your muscle. But if you were using it, your body says, oh, this stuff's important, so let's not eat it. So yes, work out hard. Okay, work out as hard as you want as long as you're not getting lightheaded and hypoglycemic. It's all a rating of perceived exertion. Push yourself as hard as you ordinarily would, but listen to your body. The next one is gonna be the advice that kind of cracks me up because I think it's just generic and it's just what people default. Just skip breakfast. That's all it is for intermittent fasting and you do that for the rest of your life. I would rather you skip breakfast and intermittent fast than not do it at all, don't get me wrong, but I don't want you to think that that's the only way Okay, I have made the shift from skipping breakfast to skipping dinner, and it made a world of a difference in terms of my results. But when you look at the data, it's clear as day as well. We should not be stacking all of our calories towards the end of the day. It causes problems. That's what we face as a society anyway. We eat light breakfast, we're on the go during the day, and then we eat 2,000 calories at night, messing up our circadian rhythm, slowing down our clock genes, screwing everything up. Okay, intermittent fasting can put you into a death spiral of that and develop habits where that becomes your norm. I would highly recommend you shift when you fast. That way you're switching it up all the time, keeping your body guessing. But also, there was a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that took a look at just this, and they found that subjects that, fat, or that ate between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. 
had tremendous results. They had an increase in ketone production, they had an increase in BDNF, they had much lower fasting glucose, and they had a higher expression of what is called SIRT1 or SIRT2 and 1. Now, SIRT1 is like anti-aging mother gene, right? Has to do with uh, antioxidant defense. It improves mitochondrial biogenesis, so our cells work better. It improves fatty acid oxidation, so we use more fats for fuel. Okay, plus there was a massive regulation of circadian clock genes, which tells us that not only are we getting better fat burning, not only are we getting better recovery and potential health span effects, but we're also getting these effects that are helping us sleep better and establish new patterns. Environmental cues are huge. If it's bright and light out and it's daylight hours, we're designed to be eating. If it's dark out, we're designed to be sleeping, not stuffing our faces. And if we follow this just skip breakfast all the time, that becomes a habit. And eventually our body adjusts to that and we just load up on calories at night and eventually we don't sleep good and everything just kind of gets ruined. So switch it up. Occasionally fast in the morning, occasionally fast at night, but don't ever be a one-trick pony. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.